of galaxy evolution. So we're gonna try to make a really rough timeline, not to scale on this arrow of time here. Um, and our scale is billions of years ago. So I'll give you numbers in terms of billions of years. And the earliest event that we'll put on our timeline is 13.8 billion years ago, the universe starts expanding. We'll talk about that in more detail in the section on cosmology. And then the next major event is the earliest detection of star formation that we have. So your book discusses this, that hydrogen emission from very early galaxies indicates star formation. Remember that hydrogen emission, this is what usually nearby we would see as those red emission nebulae that indicate that stars are lighting up clouds of gas. And this happened at 13.2 billion years ago. So we know for sure that there were galaxies all the way back at that time. That's what we're seeing in this particular image. It's a very fuzzy image, right? But the data suggests that that's star formation happening in an early galaxy. So galaxies formed really soon after the universe. All right, the next event that we'll talk about is at 12 and a half billion years ago. So some time has passed. Um, an entire generation of stars has already lived and died. So there's evidence of heavy elements in the accretion disks around quasars. And the only way that you could get heavy elements is if stars form them in their cores via nuclear fusion. And so if we see heavy elements, then we know that a star already created that heavy element and then died, seeding the heavy elements into the interstellar medium. So um, this is you know, very suggestive of how um, multiple generations of stars can, can live in a single galaxy. So we know for sure that one generation happened within about a billion years. All right, we start to be able to get a little bit of better, better imaging on galaxies at around 11 billion years ago. So in this image, these um, are very clumpy, irregular. You can see that some of them appear like they have maybe multiple um, cores. Uh, so these irregular shapes of galaxies also have very low mass. So uh, 10 to the 10 times the mass of the sun. And if we compare that to some of the more massive fragments, the ones that you were looking at in the activity are around 8 billion years old. So these are, um, you know, a one order of magnitude larger than these lower mass fragments and a few billion years later. And somehow these more massive kind of proto-galactic fragments that are starting to look sort of like spiral galaxies um, eventually become the, the sorts of spiral galaxies we see today. So if our look back time for these is about 8 billion years, then tell me about their redshifts. And I'm going to give you that table. So I'll put these, these options A, B, C, and D. Here they are. Our 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, and 4. So figure out what is the redshift that corresponds to a look back time of 8 billion years. Okay, I'm seeing the most votes for C. So if we have a look back time of 8 billion years, that's 7,800 million years. And so that corresponds to a redshift of somewhere around one. So we know if our look back time is less than about 8 billion years, it has to be less than one. All right, so this is what, what I mean when I say we sometimes use redshift to also denote the age of an object um, because redshift is what is easily measured. And so therefore lots of astronomers communicate using just that. All right, so here's an idea of our, you know, somewhat orderly kind of medium orderly galaxies at a redshift of one. Remember the, um, the one we showed you in the activity that's very orderly and nearby is redshift of 0 0.002. All right, so somehow we need to get from these more massive fragments to these sort of high orderly, um, you know, beautiful spirals that we see today. So modern galaxies, the ones that are nearby us, have mass around 10 to the 11 to 10 to the 12 solar masses. Um, our Milky Way is within that mass range, so is Andromeda. And many of the nearby galaxies can be classified with Hubble's system. Um, Maybe it's lucky that Hubble was classifying galaxies, you know, when we were only able to observe nearby galaxies, because otherwise the Hubble classification system might have had to be much more complicated than it is, right? Um, but instead, Hubble was observing nearby galaxies, developed that 
classification system. And it isn't until later in this in the history of astronomy that we're able to look at these less orderly low mass um, early galaxies. And so usually these types of um, disorganized galaxies, uh, these we might characterize as spirals, but many of our, other of them are irregular galaxies. So these clumpy ones in particular. Okay, so to get from those fragments to the modern galaxies that we see, the primary theory for how this occurred is that galaxies collide and merge to go from small, less orderly galaxies to larger, more ordered shapes. So this is the essential idea, and I want to kind of break it down and look at some of the observational evidence that supports this. 